The Thursday matinee tomorrow follows the plight of a young woman whose baby is kidnapped by her husband. And when the authorities prove unable to help, two reporters take on the task of recovering Cathy's child at five past two tomorrow afternoon. Well, we're back, are ya? How are you? Good day? I hope so. It was a bit cold this morning, wasn't it? It took me by surprise. I woke up and it was snowing outside. Amazing. Right now then, no giggles though. I tried very hard not to giggle today. Disgraced myself yesterday afternoon. This has come from the South Yorkshire Wing 860 Woodhouse Squadron in Sheffield. At a ceremonial entry parade held this day, Cadet Gordon the Gopher, BBC Children's Television, after probationary training, was enrolled as a member of this squadron on the confident ex expectation that he will do honour to his county, to the squadron, to his parents and to himself. You've been taken, you've got a badge and everything. It's come from everyone at 860 Squadron in Sheffield. And I'll put the badge on, on you during the programme. But look! Look at this. Look at all this. He says thank you very much indeed, but it was mine. I didn't get one. But what I have got, of course, if you're going to join that, you have to have a haircut. So if you'd like to come here, come here. Ah, oh, well, he's gone. Now, this afternoon on Children's BBC, in just a moment, we've Bullwinkle and Rocky. That's the start of a new story today, isn't it? I seem to remember. Gordon, come back and tell me if it's the start of a new story. Is it? Oh, yes, well, that was very good. Yes, I wouldn't rely on you. Yes, it's called Mucho Lomo, the Masked Rider. Then at four o'clock, this still goes on. Ten past four, Laurel and Hardy. There's the calf of the November cloud. 4.30, Banana Man. Fast forward is back. There's news round and there's dead entry. But now, Bull Wilkin at his men who are. <laughs> <laughs> Mexico. Just over the horizon lay the sleepy little village of Mucho Loma. English translation, much mud. Folk who dwelled there were so tuckered out, slashing their way through the streets, they spent most of the day and night regaining their strength. Tell me, Jose, you old stick in the mud. Are you too tired to play tiddly winks? I too tired to tiddly, but I gonna take 40 winks. It was just about then that Guadalupe Rodriguez made his untimely entrance into Mucho Loma. It will be chill today, but at the Mali, but oh my golly, blame it all on Sam or Sally. The arms of Morpheus were fractured. Hey, you with the big mouth, you are under arrest. What for I under arrest in your sherry? City ordinance, no more cuatro, dos cinco, being a loud mouth during siesta. It was one year later that a tight-lipped Guadalupe walked out of jail, mounted his loyal steed, rode at least 200 miles without saying a word, halted in the middle of nowhere, and said, Dirty cotton-picking town! Revenge had burned deep into his tone-deaf head, and his plan for attaining it was at the very least bizarre. First, he stole a branding iron, one with an O at the end. Next, he made off with a black cowboy suit that had once been worn by Sunset Carson. That night, when all of Mucho Loma was peacefully slumbering, a masked rider galloped in and raised an unbelievable ruckus. Hey, 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 everybody up! Nobody for the cheek! The dam is breaking right inside of the ladder! Lights were frantically lit, but not the citizens. They stumbled out of their beds, alarmed by the uproar. Doggone, this mud is ruining my Dr. Denton's. Don't worry about the mud. Look what's coming. Down the street he dashed, pausing long enough to stab his hot branding iron here, there, everywhere. The mark of zero. Thus begins a terrible tale, a tale of endless nights in which the masked marauder tormented the town, not so much as allowing a child to close its eyes and teeth. Red-eyed, thoroughly distraught, the town council held an emergency meeting. Senores, please, no bickering. Now, we must hire someone to capture this notorious night rider with the big mouth. Any suggestions? Let's call in the Lone Ranger. No, he's got problems of his own. He just found out Tanto is a girl. Suppose we leave this perplexed group and look in on our heroes, Rocky and Bowwinkle, whose touring sedan has come to an unscheduled stop atop a hill overlooking Mucho Loma. I think we made a wrong turn when we left Tallahassee. Well, you had the map, Bullwinkle. I had what map, Rob? The one I told you to keep under your hat. This is not a hat. This is a hat rack. 
I mean, check a bit, Nico. Well, chances are we're lost then and probably out of gas. I shall check the gas tank. And so he did while Rocky surveyed the town below. Sure hope there's a garage down there. Well, I checked the gas tank. It's still there. I know it's there. Is there any gas in it? I shall check. Oh, God. Say, Rock, I can't see inside the tank. Got a match? You strike a match and we'll blow off. <laughs> it must be a joke. Bullwinkle was smart enough not to use a match. <laughs> You're right, sir. I shall use my lighter. You couldn't call it a complete mistake, for it not only catapulted the moose back into the car, but sent it reeling down the hill at a breakneck clip. And of all things, right at the Mucholoma Town Hall. Will they get together? Will they hit?